Coming up on National Focus, Prime Minister Skerry talks with residents of Portsmouth at the start of the 2012-2013 school year. Dominica's senior citizens demonstrate how valuable they are to the community. And a few young men from the Roseau Valley area benefit from government's apprenticeship program. I'm Mervyn Matthew. Welcome to National Focus. And I'm Jana Hector. Thanks for joining us. Top in the headlines, Attorney General says greed is to blame for many crimes. And Finance Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt speaks out against cheating employers. Our lead story this news time on the heels of the 2012-2013 academic year. The country's Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, has challenged residents of Portsmouth to ensure that every child attends school this school year. The Prime Minister made the call when he addressed a special meeting of residents of the town and surrounding communities on Sunday. In keeping with his government's No Child Left Behind policy, the Prime Minister assured residents that his government will meet the cost of those who cannot afford to send the child to preschool. Let me say to you very clearly, that we would like to have every single child in Glanville and Portsmouth and the whole of the country at school. There should be no reason why any child in Glanville should not be in school. You can't use the excuse that you don't have books. You can't use the excuse that you child doesn't have a pair of shoes. We have to help you to get these things to ensure that every child goes to school. Whether it is at preschool level, whether it is at primary school, secondary school, or the state college. Prime Minister Skerritt said further that no child left behind policy will ensure that students who cannot make it to preschool or whose parents may not have the funds on a monthly basis will be assisted by the government of Dominica. The children who are preschool age, and you have situations where there will be children at preschool age, and sometimes the parents, for one reason or the other, cannot go to work because the children, they have to stay home with the children. Now, if we have parents who have children and they can't send the children to preschool, and they cannot find a job, it's going to be difficult for them to take care of their families. You understand? And therefore, I am here this afternoon to say to you, any child who is of preschool age, we should put those children at the preschool. And those of you who cannot afford, you need to let the parents know, you should let the government know, so we can help to pay, we can help to pay the, the fees for your children to go to preschool. And similarly, and similarly at the primary school, and similarly at the post of secondary school. Over the past years, the government has made significant investments in the education of the Dominican people. Many students now have access to the school transfer grant, which covers textbooks and uniforms. The government has also implemented the school feeding program, and to date, more than 30 schools are part of that program. The government is also assisting students with transportation to and from school on a daily basis. Meantime, Prime Minister Skerritt continued with his appeal for parents to take greater responsibility as far as their children's education is concerned. The Prime Minister said parents should treat their children's education as priority. The country's leader said that this can be demonstrated by parents showing a keen interest in their children's educational development. I can tell you a child will do as well as a child wants to do if we as parents show that we are very serious about the child's education. So I'm saying that the little things that we can do as parents to tell our children, one, that we really care about them, two, that we really love them, and like to be the best that they can be by 
going to the schools, speaking to their parents, their teachers, knowing who the teachers are, um, knowing when the PTA meetings are held, when the child comes back from school, from school in the afternoon, even if you cannot read and write, you can sit down with the child and say, what did you do today? And let, let he, or, or, he or she show you what he or she did for the day. And sitting there and showing that he does homework. You understand? All these little things you can do to help your children do well at school. The Prime Minister is also calling for greater interaction among parents and teachers in tracking students' performance throughout the school year. He must also know that you have direct contact with his teachers. So if you feel that something is not wrong, is not right, you can in fact call the teacher and find out how is my son doing. I get a sense that something is not right with him. He keeps saying to me he has no homework every time. Is that true? And she will tell you either yes or no and then you will know how to confront your child if your child is telling you the truth. Do not wait when at the end of the school year and the child has repeated his class for the final one. How did it happen? It happened because we did not pay attention for the entire year. Apart from speaking about issues relating to education, Prime Minister Skerritt also used Sunday's meeting with residents to hear their individual concerns and to discuss ways on how government can best address them. The St. Jerome's Ministry in Grand Bay continues to encourage senior citizens in that part of the island to remain active. For decades, the senior citizens have demonstrated their skills in art and craft, including crochet, producing straw hats, embroidery, bags, purses, and even earrings. Coordinator of the St. Jerome's Ministry for Senior Citizens, Ignatia Pascal, says the seniors meet twice a week. And it's not only about art and craft, a lot of time is spent in discussion. We, we talk about school days, we talk about things of long ago, we talk about the healthy living, we talk about helping one another, helping one another to make people feel comfortable when they come in their midst. Pascal has, for the past 20 years, been involved in the provision of voluntary service to the senior citizens. She described the experience as challenging, but is inspired every day by interaction with the seniors. Because of the commitment of the members of St. Jerome's Ministry, it keeps me going and going and going, because they too are very passionate about coming here. The work of the St. Jerome's Ministry goes beyond the discussion and art and craft, which serves as energy boosters for the seniors. The needs of the bedridden in the community are also catered for. There's a lady who goes out to the home to do some cleaning for them, and we pay the lady. We pay her, and we also provide pampers, we provide grocery, we provide transportation to take them to church once in a while. Throughout the years, the coordinator and the team have developed some interesting terms to describe activities held by the ministry. We have our dance session here. We have something we call senior sliders. That is the dance session because, as you know, we are not as energetic as the young people. So we call that senior sliders. And we, when we go out for a walk, we call it a sunshine steppers because the sun is so bright and warm. We don't want to call it bell mashes, so we call it sunshine steppers. One of the seniors, Mary John Philip, has been involved in the St. Jerome's ministry for over 13 years. She's actively involved in art and craft, specifically sewing and embroidery. She was asked how she felt about her involvement with the St. Jerome's ministry. I um, feel so happy. I can never live. Mary also visits the sick at the Princess Margaret Hospital, Grotto Home for the Homeless, and the Dominica Infirmary. Last week, the seniors got a visit from the Dominica's Lady of Song, Ophelia Marie, who is also a board member of the Dominica Council on Aging. There is so much that they have to offer. Um, their intellect, their sense of values, all of the things that they did before us so that our younger people can benefit from the goodness that is Dominica. Mary was impressed that young people were interacting with the senior citizens. It's true the emphasis is on older persons or senior citizens, but there are young people around here working together with them. And that, for me, 
is the kind of recognition we need for the work that the seniors have done and are doing. And the fact that the seniors themselves are willing to unpass the information that they have to younger people is, is fabulous. The Dominica Council on Aging has served as advocates on behalf of the, of the island's senior citizens since 1993. In more news, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt has taken a stand against government defaulters and cheating employers. Honorable Skerritt, while speaking at the commissioning of the new Mount Bruce water storage tank, recently reprimanded bosses who steal from the government and their employees. You cannot deduct from an employee's um, salary pay and keep it as if it is your own money. This is the money of the government that we need to fix up the roads that require tremendous attention, that we need to build hospitals because we have to build a new hospital, still of the art hospital in Marigot. It's going to cost us several millions of dollars. And I have given a commitment to my friends in Bells that we, the last community requiring urgent attention in respect to water, that we should start the process as soon as possible. The finance minister also castigated those persons who are slacking on paying monies owed to the government. He said that those actions directly affect the country. And if the government sells you land or house, you can't be enjoying the spoils of that land or the house and pretend as if you do not owe the state. You, when you buy land from the private sector, you go to the bank and you take a loan and you pay the private person his full amount. So why do it to the people of Dominica? Why do it to the taxpayers? And why do it to the country? Honorable Skerritt said to defaulters that his government intends to collect on every outstanding debt. I want to say to us, my dear brothers and sisters, that revenue is going to be critical and the government will take in every action to, to collect its taxes. And as a Christian society, we have to render to Caesar that which is Caesar's. Dominica's Attorney General, Honorable Levi Peter, feels that a lot of the criminal activity of late can be attributed to greed. Speaking at the most recent crime, violence, and anti-social behavior panel discussion in Wesley, Honorable Peter opined that these crimes are usually not committed out of need. It is greed that causes most of the acquisitive crimes that we are seeing, the drug running, uh, even some of the violence that is taking place, because a lot of it is linked with it. It's pure greed. The thefts that we're seeing people stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from their employer, not because they're hungry, it's greed. Honorable Peter went further to state that it is imperative for parents to teach their children to be satisfied with what their parents can afford. And a lot of that is tied in with the family, where, where I think, um, not, again, I, want, I don't want to get the impression that children or people will not do whatever they want, but I think a lot of it is that we are not giving the right discipline, the right training often to our children so that they're not seeing the value in themselves in what they have. Because it's not because you have a big house and a big car that you are a decent person. There are many people who are poor, but proud and upright people. They may not have all the trappings, the, the materialistic things, but you, know, you can put your bag down there and they will not trouble it. They understand something my mother used to say, what is not mine doesn't burn my eyes. You know, they are very simple things. But, and those things go a long way in terms of um, having a society. That is, you know, you have what you have. Obviously, you want to strive to have more and have better and for your children to have more and have better. But there are ways and means of doing it. And the Attorney General acknowledged that children will take their own paths eventually, but it would be unfair for them to blame their upbringings for their own wrongs. In more news, work is progressing satisfactorily on the Tito Gorge reception facility in Loda, which will consist of a changing area, bathroom, and bar. A GIS news team accompanied the parliamentary representative for the Rose of Valley constituency, Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, on a site visit of the project Monday morning, where a group of young men were actively involved in stone masonry. The Tito Gorge has never really, you know, received this sort of um, building that we see we're seeing happening right now. In the past, we have had little shelters around here, nothing of that standard. We saw it fit through the Ministry of Tourism, and I must compliment the Ministry of Tourism for developing this project in terms of putting this facility here. We saw it fit to come in as the, um, the Ministry of Trade Employment under the um, Small Business Support Unit, which is the apprenticeship program, where we decided to train some young men. These young men are being trained over a period of nine weeks and are receiving a stipend of $50 a day for their training. The parliamentary representative is asking Dominicans to support these young men. 
And we've been speaking about training, retooling our people in Dominica, and we started to lose this fine art of stone masonry. And I saw it fit to employ some of the young guys in the area. We speak here of Loda, we speak here of Mount Prosper, Trafalgar, and what Maven. We have five young men being trained here. Of course, the tutor or the, um, the, the professor, I'd like to call him, Mr. Gavin. Xavier comes from Gallion in the, in the south. And Gavin is the one who is training the young guys here for us <coughs> from the, um, the Rosa Valley. And what we see here is the, um, the, the, the facing of stones and you know, really giving them a lovely face and shaping the stones into a puzzle. And this is what we see here. And the minister further stated that the art of stone masonry and fine carpentry has been lost among young Dominican men. And if the apprenticeship program, the hope is to get as many young men and women skilled so they can generate income for themselves. Gavin Zave is a stone mason who was contracted to train these young men. He told us the camaraderie and respect between the men helped to make the experience a memorable one. He also stated that these young men were quick learners. The two minutes shine is what it takes, you know, to accomplish something. And it's like the bond we have as young men together. I think we accomplish it quite fine, though. And as far as you could see, it was quite successful. According to the Honorable Mark Entire, the Tito Gorge reception facility is expected to be commissioned before year end. Well, John, according to the Prime Minister, during his budget presentation, $500,000 available for business owners, for example, who want to help develop the skills among young people. Especially important, bearing in mind, the Attorney General recently made a statement, and in that statement he said, hey, we know crime is on the rise, but we're trying to deal with it, but don't blame unemployment. I tend to agree with the Attorney General. A lot of people blame unemployment for, the, for, for criminal activity. And it's kind of unfair because so many people are finding positive things to do, yet there are others who just insist on antisocial behavior. At the same time, government has provided an initiative for young people to find something useful to do. So young people should tap into that. It, unemployment shouldn't be any kind of excuse when you have so many positive things that you could be doing, Mervyn. And let's also, also bear in mind that government is also contributing as part of this $350 monthly to, to the business money. owners. Oh. You know that, and that will help um, in terms of different costs, in terms of probably paying them a little salary at the end of the month. So things are happening. So I don't, I don't think that um, the young people have any excuse. In addition to that, Mervyn, I think that is a very unique opportunity. It's something that we haven't really heard a lot of in the past, the government providing money so that you could find something useful to do. I think that's very, that's very forward thinking of this, of this administration, and you should take advantage of that. That's right. And that's news. Up next, your tip of the day. In today's tip, we'll discuss passions as a secret to happiness. The more passions and desires one has, the more ways one has of being happy. Passions lead you to happiness. So not only should you discover your multiple passions, you should also expand yourself to new passions. This way you will create new ways to happiness. The key to expanding to new passions is curiosity. If you're curious, you will have an endless stream of exciting things awaiting you. And that's National Focus. As usual, we invite your suggestions or comments. Please feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Or you could visit our GIS Dominica pages on both YouTube and Facebook. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. And I'm Jana Hector. Thanks for watching.
This is a serious message from the National HIV AIDS Prevention Unit in collaboration with the St. Martin's Secondary School Drama Group. There's a point I want to share with you. They say there's nothing you can do about an earthquake. It's sudden. But there's something we can do. Having our family planning meeting in advance, just in case, to protect the children and the family. No, any monkey may cry, but when you're running, you must know where you're running to. Okay? See me on Twamble Dice, an earthquake. You, your family, and your children, and everybody at home must know exactly what to do, where to go, where to run. And the other thing is that you must know your surroundings. Because in Senior Piegwala, you can trip and fall and get hurt. Another secret place to go is under a table. Don't go under a glass table or a window or a door. It will break and shikaye and cut you. Go under a strong table. You want to see how you come in? Or you get it? But it's not just to drop, cover, and hold. And then you, you have your head in your leg and you cover your head and you cover your eyes and you back away. Felix, tell them. And yes, drop, cover, and hold. But only to serve Kumankai Labati. Know your surroundings where it is safe in the house. And one thing to remember, if an earthquake happens, you must find a secure place. And your bathroom is a secure place, a sure place. Because the smaller the place, the more secure you are. So remember that. And under a potage, the dresser is a very good place to hide. I agree. The closet, where you have all those old jackets and those kyang kyang, all the shoes, the, mm -hmm. is a very good place, it's a safe place. The closet. That's a good idea. And the bookshelf, I mean, Nepot Plus Consul, Kisa Tombe Asu, stay away. A message from the Office of Disaster Management in Dominica. Together we build, together we strive, we see it all. On your government information service, Channel 7. This is the government information service, bringing you all that you need to know about all that's happening in your country's development. GIS, you and your channel.